we're going to go ahead and get started. So welcome to today's Career Learning Link event, Performing Arts, Where to Start. My name is Stephanie Denler with NICC, and we have an exciting panel and some um, pictures, some websites, some great information to share over the next 45 minutes. This is being recorded, so if any of the students or participants have any questions, please place them in the chat box, and Holly will be monitoring that throughout the, um, throughout the event. So I'm going to turn it over to Holly now, and she's going to introduce herself and get the panel started. Great. Thanks, Steph. So my name is Holly Ray. I am serving as the Northeast Iowa Community College Manchester Center Director. So we're very excited to have our three panelists here today um, just to showcase what, how to get into the performing arts, um, tips and tricks. Um, we're excited to see what you guys can share, um, your history, what you've been through. Um, so I am going to start off with a panel. So we'll do that for a few minutes, um, about 15 minutes, and then I'm going to turn it over to each of you uh, where you can showcase your work for 10 minutes. And again, students, if you have any questions, go ahead and place those in the chat. I will be monitoring that. Um, but why don't we go ahead and get started? And Kathy, I'm going to have uh, direct this to you first, and then we'll go through the panelists. Um, we did have several student questions come in, and why don't you start out with what made you want to get into the industry that you're in? So if you want to introduce yourself and then just start with that question. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I am Zooming you from New York City, uh, where I'm an assistant costume designer right now on the television show Dr. Death, uh, which was based on a podcast out of Texas a few years ago. So um, it's a limited series. So it has eight episodes. And right now we're in the, the last push. We just have a few weeks left. So um, it's a so zooming you from the New York City. Um, I am a West Delaware grad. So I grew up in Manchester. Yay! And um, so I'm very excited for this for this Zoom today. So because you guys are um, all in my home, <laughs> my home state. So which is always very nice. Um, so how I got in, how I got into the arts, how I got into costume design. All right. Um, well, it was not something I knew I was going to be doing growing up. Uh, so growing up, I was very much into sports. You know, West Delaware has a wonderful, um, not, you know, uh, definitely a great arts program, but it just wasn't something that I fell into while I was there. Um, I golfed, uh, played volleyball, uh, did a swim team. Essentially, I did all the sports I possibly could, middle school, um, some through high school. Uh, so that was definitely my focus. And I wasn't, I wasn't in the arts. Uh, I've never acted. I've never performed. Um, and uh, so I wasn't part of the theater uh, program there. Uh, it wasn't until I was in college, because um, I went to college to be a dentist. Uh, so I went, <laughs> went to the dentistry program at the University of Iowa. Um, and uh, came out a costume designer. So I fell into it um, in college. So uh, I was not enjoying the curriculum of pre-dentistry and ended up having a wonderful academic advisor um, who listened to me, um, who asked me, you know, what I was interested in and they steered me in the right path. And I landed in a, an introduction uh, theater arts class uh, where we read a script, we analyzed it, we researched it. I, uh, we got to design the set, so the environment which the play would be in, uh, research the costumes, we got to draw what maybe these people would be wearing in this play. And it was in that course, in that class, my sophomore year of college at the University of Iowa, that I found that project to be very, very exciting. I was excited to get home, to do the projects, to show up, to showcase. I was proud of the work I was doing and I'd never done it before. So um, it was my first A's. <laughs> it was, I, so not only was I enjoying it, but the teacher responded positively towards me um, by rewarding me with, with great grades as well. So um, they directed me down the hallway to the costume professor. Um, and uh, I essentially never left her office for the next three, <laughs> two and a half years. Um, so that was my roundabout way of getting into the arts. It definitely was not my career uh, path when I went to Iowa, but it has been my career path now for 20 years. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing, Kathy. Yeah. Um, and I love to point out that that's why we're really excited to do this panel because you might kind of go into one area and then as you're in college or you're taking classes or you're going on job shadows and having experiences that you might be guided in a completely different direction and um, we always like to emphasize that's okay right you can change your mind um so thank you for emphasizing that and sharing your path kathy yeah. and Nancy, the reason, the reason oh, why I went, the reason why i went to college to be a dentist is because i did a job shadow 
So through the through West Delaware, I wrote down, I went and shadowed two uh, businesses in Manchester, and one of them was dent a dentist, so Dr. Geller. Um, and it was there that I shadowed him that day. He offered me a job for the summer. I ended up working there for a year and a half. And it was there from that job shadow experience from at West Delaware that led me to Iowa. So I just, you saying that, I just had to plug that in. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's perfect because really that's, that's the path. That's where we're all at right now. So it's, it's so important for our high school students to hear that. Yeah. So thank you for adding that too. Nancy, I'll have you um, go next. Um, just kind of share a little bit about you and then what got you into the arts. Yeah, so I grew up in a little town called St. Ansgar, Iowa, and it had a very good music program, and I was very involved. Also, my family's very musical, so I've always been involved in music, but where that ended up um, taking me was I went to Luther, got an ed degree, music ed, and that led me to say, hey, well, since you're the music teacher, why don't you direct a show? So like you, Kathy, I really was never involved in theater in high school, but I was in a few operas, I was in a few musicals op opportunities at Luther, and that really got the bug going in me. Um, and then starting to direct musical theaters, it was like, this is where I want to be because it's the greatest collaboration I can find in the arts because it takes all these different designers and choreographers and musicians and yes, yeah, so I like to be a part of community and it led me to doing theater and then all of a sudden people started thinking of me, thinking of me as a theater teacher and not a music teacher. Um, and then I got involved in the professional world in the Twin Cities where I, I think of myself as a dual citizen. I live in Minneapolis and I live in St. Ansgar. I have a house in both places. So that's, that's how I got into it. I think it's being open to opportunities, like Kathy said, and, and following your passion. And that will, between finding opportunity and passion, you're going to find a good marriage of having a career that doesn't feel like a job, but rather a, um, a calling. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Nancy. Um, again, it's just awesome to hear from you guys, the professionals in this industry, because your stories just mean so much to the people listening and hopefully they can see themselves where you guys are. Um, Laura, we will go ahead and same question. Just tell us a little bit about where you're at, um, and how you got into the arts. Great. So, okay. So opposite of Kathy and Nancy, I <laughs> was too invested from the get-go. So maybe you'll also resonate with that. So Julie Anderson, who's actually on this call, is my aunt. And she saw me like perform when I was a kid at five years old with my mom in a community theater production in Decorah, Iowa. I grew up in Dubuque, Iowa, and I was in high school. Theater was life. That was all I wanted to do. Uh, all of my other teachers thought I was exceedingly shy, except my drama director knew I wasn't. And I was in the International Thespian uh, Society and we performed, um, oh my gosh, what did, we, what did we perform? Oh, my blanking. We performed at the International Thespian Festival uh, on the main stage and Rabbit Hole. Oh my gosh, how did I forget that? It was David Lindsay Bear, that by David Lindsay Bear. And that was a life changing moment for me because we performed in their huge amphitheater that seated thousands of people and just all these high schoolers together who were so excited to just experience the magic of theater at a higher level with these with these kids who just lived and breathed theater. So I really was invested from an early age. So I knew I wanted to go to college for theater, so I auditioned at the Unified Theater Auditions, which I'm going to talk about later, which if you are interested in acting, you must do, because you audition, you can go to either New York, LA, or Chicago and audition for over, I think it's like 150 schools in a weekend, and it's crazy, but that's how I got into Webster Conservatory of Theater Arts in St. Louis, so I went to Webster for those four years, got my BFA in acting. Then I moved to Chicago. I worked Chicago uh, in, in Chicago for the for three years. Oh wait, no. I went on tour with Missoula Children's Theater, which a lot of people do after college. So I toured the country, a different musical every single week in a different town 
with 60 kids, it, it, crazy pants, but we did it. And then I moved to Chicago, was there for three years acting. And then I moved to Seattle, been to Seattle for two years doing film and acting theater right now. You know, the pandemic, you can't really do it, but I've been doing a lot more film auditions and working with film. And I'm about to make a move to Portland until I make a move wherever I go for grad school. So if you're an actor, you're probably going to live a bunch of places is what I'm going to share with you today. And that's okay. So hopefully if you are interested in acting professionally, you are an adventurous spirit because chances are, if you are planning on working professionally, you're going to be traveling a lot um, or you're going to be in a bigger theater city. That's your home base and maybe work regionally, but it's, it's a fun life. You feel, you feel like a vagabond. I don't know. So that's, that's my story. So kind of a different, different um, experience, but hope it helps. Yeah. yeah. Laura, thank you for sharing that too. And I, I think that's so important. You know, if you do want to go into the acting industry, you're going to have to travel and you're, you need to be okay with that and know that you might be on the East coast on one side, you know, you might be on the West coast side. Um, so that's so important. So thank you for pointing that out as well. Um, and I do want to emphasize that you guys are all originally from Iowa, right? You're all from Iowa and look at, you know, we got the whole United States covered right now. So I think that's so important that you can be from Iowa and you can make it in this industry. So thank you for sharing that as well. So the next question that we had come in from students, um, and I'm going to go in the same order, if that's okay. So Kathy, Nancy, Laura, um, what sort of education do you need for your two year? Did you have private training? Um, if you could kind of give us a little bit of information on that and Kathy, I will have you start. Kathy, you're on mute. That's the hard part of it, going back and forth. Um, I'll give you my my education journey, and then I'll I'll give you my two cents on it, I guess. Um, so my journey, like I said, I went to the University of Iowa, um, where I switched majors my end of my sophomore year. So uh, I ended up doing four and a half years at Iowa, um, and I came out with a uh, with a BA uh, in theater arts, um, where my emphasis was in costume design. So, uh, but while I was at Iowa to get the theater arts BA degree, you know, I took. We had to take acting, directing, playwriting, dramaturgy, all the classes that everyone does in the theater. So, um, and that's a little bit of a difference between like a BA and like perhaps a BFA, right, Laura, where you're able to, you know, maybe perhaps be a little bit more specific. So, um, and hone in on your specific craft. So um, as a BA, it was, it was much more of a general so that you could have a true appreciation of what everyone is doing around you as you're collaborating on a piece together. Um, so that I, you know, I think was fantastic. Um, and uh, from there, so four and a half years, I took my half year then, I put together a portfolio and um, decided to go to Erda, which is uh, very much like Leah said, uh, what is a place where all the universities come together and you're able to go and showcase your portfolio um, to, you know, 50, I think it was like 50 graduate programs. Um, so from there, I decided to go to the University of Georgia, uh, where they uh, offered me a fantastic stipend. Um, I had an assistantship, so I worked in the costume shop while in grad school. Um, and now I have a, an MFA um, in theatrical design from the University of Georgia. So I lived in Athens, Georgia for three years. Um, my last semester of graduate school, I took an internship at the Alliance Theater in, in Atlanta, Georgia. So I lived over in Atlanta for five months. Uh, so, and I was very lucky that I was able to incorporate my internship into the MFA program. So I didn't have to do it afterwards um, when I wasn't making any money and you know trying to figure out how to pay for an apartment. But I, you know a lot of internships pay very, very little. They used to hardly pay anything, if nothing. Um, so coming through with the next generation, we've been really pushing for uh, paid internships. And I think a lot of places it's actually illegal. So, uh, but in the arts, you will find the rules tend to get blurred many places. Um, so we're trying to unblur those lines. <laughs> um, my interns that work for me in New York, uh, they are paid. So, and I, and I try to really call them interns and I like to call them PAs or production assistants. So, um, so after, so I was very lucky that I was able to have that internship as part of the MFA program. Um, then from there, I came straight to New York City um, and 
and started working my way up uh, the ladder in a costume. Uh, I worked uh, for a Broadway costume designer on a lot of productions, but I was freelance. So I, I jumped around from production to production. I did work with other designers, um, but you really, you hit the ground run and you, you, know, you land into a, into a city. When I graduated, it was very much New York or LA. So now there's pockets all over the country. Well, not all over, but there's several pockets in the country. Like Atlanta now is a massive hub. So Tyler Perry has huge movie studios down there and they're opening up other movie studios. So um, that hub did not exist when I was in graduate school there. So um, I, my story could be very, very different if that would have been set up at that time. Um, now, not everybody in my field has uh, has the master's degree, but um, for to be a... Uh, uh, costume design or theatrical design, that is the terminal degree. So the MFA is the highest degree you can get in costume design. So there is no PhD, so to speak. Um, you could get a PhD in theater history, you know, and you could, add, you know, point your interest into some sort of design. But really, um, I have the highest degree that you can get in which you need to have an MFA if you want to teach at a university or at a co or most colleges as well. So um, I just didn't have the, ex I didn't think I had the enough experience coming out of undergrad to work in a freelance environment without getting that additional three-year uh, intensive study that graduate school was going to offer me. Um, but I do know uh, several of my friends and who do very, very well in the industry came straight here from undergrad, but they went into college knowing they wanted to be costume designers. They did four years intensive and, you know, probably an internship in undergrad and did summer stock. So they spent their summers doing costume work as well. So a lot of the experience I had, I got in graduate school because I started late, they were able to get an undergrad and they went straight to New York City. So um, essentially everybody I know pretty much has a four-year degree here um, at minimum. Most people have an, I'd say maybe half, half have an MFA. Um, some people have actually come out of the fashion programs as well, so. Thank you for sharing, Kathy. That is just a wealth of information if you're wanting to go into the costume design industry, so thank you. Nancy, I'm gonna hand it over to you and if you could share um, same information, you know, uh, what sort of education training do you need? Well, I, <laughs> I, what I got into is more of the educational field. So what my my work, the most the biggest body of my work is in the education field, and it's mostly at the secondary level with high school students. Um, and I moved around the country a lot and and built programs and then left and built programs and left. So from New Jersey to Milwaukee for a while, um, and Southern Iowa for a year or two, and then Minneapolis became the predominant area that I did my work. And I teach in an urban setting. So it was a diverse, very diverse community that had no arts. And I would build program. Um, a lot of my students went on. And this is where I learned about MFAs and BFAs and how to get them ready for unifieds. And really felt like I became a good mentor for students wanting to enter this field just from former students um, following these pathways and staying connected. Um, and then built these really, really, um, I think, excellent musical theater programs where we did actually three musicals a year at the high school and so that we could get every student an opportunity from the beginners to intermediates to the advanced kids opportunities to be involved in theater, which led to me getting um, a Tony recognition for four years in a row um, for the work I did. So it's an education, a Tony education, uh, you know, to educators, right? So that I got to a point in my career teaching high school and I said, I need, I want to move on and work with college students. This is the next level of work I want to do. So I started a theater company because I didn't have that MFA or all those professional degrees to get into professional theater, which I think you really need. So if you want to be a director in a professional field, you're going to need those degrees. And I was at a point in my career where I wasn't ready to start that over, but I took all the information I had honed in my career and said, I want to go back to Iowa and I want to start a theater company and I bring in college kids from all over the country um, every well and this is will be our fourth season because we're going to do it outdoors so we are going to have a season this year so please come and see us. Um, and we are we bring in 20 college students. Um, well, yeah, 20 college students, so 15 actors and five tech students. So when Kathy talked about summer stock experience, we bring in um, technical students to work with 
our and be mentored by our designers um, in the summer. We do four musicals in well, two weeks each musical. So we get two weeks to rehearse and then perform. And while we're performing one, we're rehearsing the other. So we do four shows between June and August 15th is what we do every summer. So I feel like that's, um, I, I'm doing what I love to do because I created this opportunity out of my own experiences. And since I wanted to do it, I had to do it myself because I felt you have to know where you, what avenues you can take to follow your dreams. So. And it's going well. And I also know from working in schools that I got very good at raising money and, and very good at writing grants. So those are skills you absolutely need if you wanna run a theater company. And so, yeah, so that's how I got to where I am. Awesome, thank you. Again, Nancy, that's just great information, um, especially the steps on what you can take. So we appreciate that. Laura, I'll hand it over to you. Remind me what the original question is. <laughs> you bet. If you just want to share what sort of degree in education yeah. or if there's any additional training. Cool. Okay. So again, yes, I did get my BFA uh, through auditioning at the Unified Audition. So right now, if you are live, please write this down. It's just Unified Auditions, U-N-I-F-I-E-D auditions.com. You need, need, need to go on there and look at schools and start thinking about this if you are interested in being a professional theater actor. I say theater actor because I do have quite a few friends in the film industry who did not take the traditional schooling route for acting and they kind of moved straight out to LA and took some classes and workshops and they're booking. I mean, they are doing, but it's it's mostly commercial work, right? Most Mostly I have one good friend who she's booked like over 20 national commercials and she went straight and this is another friend from Iowa. Sorry, there is someone leaf blowing right outside the window if you're hearing that, it's driving me crazy. So she's my, she's really though my only friend from Iowa who went straight to LA and she's killing it. That doesn't happen often, my friends. So I know that like it can happen, but I am in the camp of I really think that it's worth your salt to go to an acting program, get your training, make sure it's an accredited program. Okay, so also write that word down because there are a lot of programs out there because everyone wants to be an actor. And so there's a lot of programs who can just take your money, but they're not accredited. So you really need to make sure that you are looking for a college for your school or a program that is accredited so that you are getting a degree that is a degree. There's certificates, that's great too, but I'm in the camp of, I think you should get your theater degree if you're going into theater. Um, and with that, uh, if you can, another plus is look at the schools who have showcases at the end of their program. So my school, again, this is mostly actor directed. So apologies uh, if you're not actor directed because that's my, my forte, but um, there's a lot of programs who do have showcases at the end, which means that you go with your class and you go to LA or New York. There's even some programs that go to Chicago and do perform for casting directors and agents uh, your senior year so that you might book an agent and then you move to New York and you already have an agent, which is amazing. So, so I really think connections are super important. And I know as from, I we're all from Iowa, and it's harder for us to get those connections because we're not in a big theater hub. We're not in a big, we're not in the big entertainment industry hub, right? So you might be going to school with some friends who are like, oh yeah, I've been a child actor from the age of seven in LA, you know? And you're like, cool, I grew up in a cornfield, but that doesn't mean that we can't learn together, right? So because I think this is what I, what I want to share with you all. When I auditioned for college, I went in and my confidence was low. I was good, but my confidence was so low because I was going in thinking, oh my gosh, I'm nobody. I'm from Iowa. Like they're not gonna, they're not gonna think I'm good because I, I'm from a place where there, there's not that many people in the industry. That's false. That's so false. So I want you all to go in and trust yourself in these auditions because Anyone, anyone who is passionate about this can do this, but you need to have that confidence going into the room because at the age of 27, I'm auditioning, you know, I'm still auditioning and sometimes have confidence issues and that might always stay with you. But I just want to instill in you that wherever you are from, 
you have just as much of a right to be in that room because that's what I needed to hear as a high school student going into these big scary Chicago audition rooms that's what I needed to hear and I didn't have that so I want to give that gift to you so that you know you have just as right as as much right as anybody else to 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 be on Broadway to go to LA to go to Chicago to go to and be a part of any of these industry hubs um and then I'm getting ready to audition for my MFA uh, for grad school because I'm also a teaching artist, which means that I go into schools, elementary schools, high schools, and I teach theater, mostly workshops, right? So I'm not a full-time teacher, but that's my side hustle when I'm not acting. So I'm really excited to uh, learn to teach and if you go and if you get your MFA, you can teach graduate students, right? You can teach undergraduate students uh, theater. So that's what I'm looking forward to, as well as a lot of MFA programs will give you your equity card. Ding, ding, ding. That's important at the end of the program as well. And so equity is the theater union. And we can talk about that later. If you have questions, you can email me. I'll let you sh let you share my email um, because if you are in the union, so SAG-AFTRA is the film union, and then equity is the theater union. And it's really important if you want to be a professional actor to eventually you would you want to get in those unions because then you have workers rights and you're not going to be paid a $150 stipend for a, a show you worked on for three months, which can happen a lot in the Chicago scene. So I'm getting ready. I'm, you know, <laughs> getting closer to 30 and I'm like, okay, this needs to be as equitable as a process for me, or I can't, I can't stay in this industry, right? Because I deserve to be paid a living wage. And so that's why I want to get my MFA. Um, yes. And I have, I've been on projects where I'm paid well, but again, as an actor, your pay rate is constantly in flux to, if you're not in the union. So that's, that's the other piece that I'm looking forward to with getting my MFA. Yeah. Awesome. Laura, you did have one direct question too. What's your favorite place you've been so far? And then Kathy, I'm going to hand it over to you to start um, sharing. My favorite place uh, so far has been Chicago. I was there the longest, so I was there for three years. And the theater scene there is so beautiful. And the people there are great because it's a scene where it's most it's mostly passion filled actors. If you go to Chicago, you're not going to be famous. You're not going to be on Broadway. You're not going to be you know, in a Hollywood film, probably, you are there to learn and to be in communion with other actors and to do weird, cool shows, right? So I was in a lot of um, interesting devised shows, which, you know, the, the audience moves from room to room with you and you perform. Uh, so, so anyway, there's also a lot of different types of theater. There's so much I could talk about it with, but yeah, Chicago was where it's, where it's at, where it's at. If you're just, if you want to do good theater. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Laura. And then Kathy, um, you can go ahead and share your screen and show us what you got. We can't wait to see it. And you are on mute too, Kathy. Here we go. Let's see. All right, you're able to see the slides? Yes, we are. All right, and you can hear me, right? Okay, I'm just moving that over here. Okay, oops. All right, I uh, just put together a few slides today just so you can see some of the productions that I've been a part of. Um, I've been in New York City now, uh, it'll be 16 years this summer, uh, where I started out in, in theater. The majority of my work has been uh, on Broadway productions. I started out as the lowest paid um, part of the costume design team uh, as the shopper, um, or we, I call them PAs now, the production assistant. So I'd run around the city dropping things off, setting up for fittings, anything that needed to be done, that was my job to do it. So uh, I started in that position, uh, making $600 a week. Um, and, and that was, yeah, 15 and a half years ago. Um, and now I'm an associate designer for Broadway, which means I essentially um, I'm in charge of the, all the costumes and work uh, very much in tandem with the lead designer. Um, but uh, my job is to essentially let them be, do all the create, you know, as much creative as they want uh, and everything else is just magically taken care of for them. So um, anything a costume designer does, I do it. 
we just essentially work in tandem. Um, so just some of the productions that I've been a part of, um, most of the ones on the, the top two rows are uh, Broadway productions that I was the associate designer for. Um, and my most recent was uh, Diana, which is based on the Princess Diana. Uh, that's what I was working on in March uh, when Broadway shut down on March 12th. Uh, we were two weeks away from opening on Broadway, um, and I've been working on it for about two years. We were had done a production out at La Jolla, um, which is out in California, San Diego, uh, and we were two weeks shy from opening on Broadway. So um, when that fateful day, March 12th, happened, um, and Broadway has been shut down ever since. So um, it has been a very, very difficult year in our industry, as well as many, you know, many industries and for many families. So um, it has definitely impacted our industry significantly. So with theater being shut down, um, the bottom row here are films that I've uh, that I've worked on. Uh, over on the left is uh, Russell Crowe and Noah. That was my first uh, major motion picture. The first time. Uh, um, that I worked on a, uh, a big budget uh, movie. Um, the next one was uh, I was an independent uh, movie with, uh, with Spike Lee uh, for Red Hook Summer. Um, I was one of the assistant designers on The Greatest Showman. So working with uh, Hugh Jackman, Zac Efron, Michelle Williams, Zendaya. Um, and uh, so I was in charge of all the made to orders and I worked on the principal costumes. Um, made to order means we made all the garments. So we, you know, the designer could sketch them, we find fabrics, we work with people that make the costumes, we do all the fittings to make sure they fit and they're, they're done to the specifications of the designer. Um, so that's the majority of my career is that process. Um, on the, the next over is A Christmas Story Live. So that was out in Los Angeles on the Warner Brothers backlot. Um, I'm sure you, you know, you've seen it on TV, you know, driving around a golf cart, seeing all the, the massive um, movie studios on the Warner Brothers. So to be a, a place that has so, so much history in our, in our industry was uh, truly definitely a, a check bucket item list uh, for me. So to be out on the, the back lot of Warner Brothers um, and that was shooting a live television performance for Fox, A Christmas Story Live. Um, and then on the right hand side is In the Heights, so which will be a film coming out this summer, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, these are a hand, another handful of a lot of uh, Broadway shows that I've been a part of um, as uh, part of the costume design team. Um, not that the Tonys are end all be all, but um, it just so happens that I've been a part of 12 productions that have been Tony nominated for best costume design. So <laughs> might as well show you. <laughs> um, uh, so in this range is from the Drowsy Chaperone all the way down the right hand corner was my uh, second job in New York City, um, where I was one of the, you know, the PA or the, the shopper position. Um, I was in charge of making Sutton Foster's sh shoes, her pants shoes, um, in addition to all the other ones. So I worked with cobblers where we made all the shoes um, and, um, and worked, you know, and worked all the way through. I'm sure you've heard the stories from Spider-Man. Um, that was that you can definitely say was an infamous production here on Broadway, um, all the way up to um, we have Tootsie, and that was a year ago. So these were all Tony nominated productions that I've been a part of. Um, Audra McDonald over here, Norm Lewis, Porgy and Bess, dream. Here are just a few, just a few pictures of me, like um, <laughs> um, working uh, a day in the life, a little slice of life. Um, up in the left-hand corner uh, is Michael Wilkinson, the costume designer from Noah. So there's the the arc that they made in the background as in Noah and the Ark. <laughs> that was the, <laughs> the arc that they made out um, in a park in Long Island. Yes, we filmed the whole movie in Long Island with the exception of two weeks they shot in Iceland. Um, so for a bunch of exteriors. Um, next picture over is uh, we're in a fitting. So I'm in a fitting with uh, for the Broadway production after midnight uh, and that's me. We're choosing the stripe width on a pair of custom made pants. So everything that the actor's wearing there was custom made shoes, pants, shirt. Um, and we're the designer would have been looking at us taking a picture. Um, I'm in front of the Tootsie marquee. Next picture over um, when uh, Tootsie was opening on Broadway. Um, and it just so happens that all the all the women in this picture that are flanking me on both sides are um, University of Iowa MFA graduates. So they are either from Iowa or from Minnesota. Um, and um, so the two of them, well, Three of them have been my assistants in New York City, um, and one of them just moved here uh, just a few months ago. So I haven't had the privilege of working with her yet, but she was one of my students. So, um, so three, yeah. So all of them are Midwest University of Iowa MFA 
um, graduates and we a bunch of us got to work together on Tootsie. So we, we took that picture and sent it off to our, our graduate professor, Lois, uh, at Iowa, who is the next picture over with me in, in the Greatest Showman poster there. So that was our mentor, our professor at Iowa, Lois Arthur. Um, and then just on the bottom there, the first, like I said, Noah was the first movie that I ever did, you know, my first major motion picture. So of course I had to take a picture, you know, a little selfie in front of the AMC <laughs> in, Ma in Manhattan, you know, the big movie theater in Manhattan. So, and um, the Zappos boxes, that's the story of our life. You think it's all glamorous, <laughs> but really it's just, <laughs> it's hundreds of boxes from Zappos <laughs> and shipping them all back for things that don't work. Um, my team on The Greatest Showman, um, and then over on the right is a stage door uh, in, in Chicago. So that was either on, on your feet uh, uh, with Gloria and Emilio Estefan, or it would have been Motown, the tour. So that would have been, it's now the Nederlander Theater, but it was the Oriental Theater. So that was the backstage door in the alleyway. This is just a really quick little slice of life um, to show you kind of the process from, uh, and this is a costume that we did for Motown the Musical, uh, so uh, which was based on a Diana Ross uh, costume or uh, performance gown uh, originally designed by Bob Mackey. Um, but we uh, changed it just a little bit and we showcased it as one of her, her big leaving Motown numbers um, in our Broadway production of Motown the Musical. Um, so this is kind of the process of what we do. We do our research. The designer does a sketch. We go into the fitting room. If you look really, if you look really, really carefully, you can see me behind that fitting photo. I'm in the mirror there taking the fitting photos. Um, every single bead on that dress was hand beaded. So that's what the lady down in the lower right hand left hand corner, she's beading every single bead on that dress are Swarovski beads and she's hand beading it. And the designer's like looking under the table, like to see the other side of it, to see the handwork. And you can see Sammy, that. We we did have a question in the chat. Did you make all of this? Did you design all of this? So I'm the associate designer for this production here. So I work, um, so Emilio Sosa, who is here in this fitting and this fitting photo in the, in the brown sweatshirt and cap, he was the lead designer for it. Um, and I've been working with Emilio. We, we worked together for about six years. Um, I was his lead associate for all this Broadway work. So I do, you know, I do all the script breakdowns, all the research, um, I, you know, I lay out all the items in front of him, all the research, and then he's the one who actually does the sketch. So, and then I'm with him every step of the way. So every fit, every fitting I'm there, every, you know, every step of the way. So he, Emilio Sosa was the lead designer. Um, he was, if you ever watch Project Runway, he actually was on it twice because he did the all-stars. He was runner up both times in both of his series. Um, but he's been working in the industry, um, you know, since he got out of high school was, and he's from New York. So. Um, so that's my job as an associate is to be the right, left, and every finger and toe of the designer. <laughs> so, um, and then the final product there on the right. So, so that's kind of our a quick glimpse. Um, the Christmas Story Live, it kind of down in the lower and the left hand corner again. It just shows you kind of research to sketch, and then the the final product to the right. Um, so a Christmas story, if you might have ever seen the movie from the 80s, right? Most of you have seen that movie growing up at some point or another around the holiday season. The most, you know, one of the most famous props in all of film history would be this leg lamp. <laughs> so as sexist as it may be, or, <laughs> but it's essentially, a, I guess, an iconic um, slice of American history at this point. Um, uh, so we did, a, a, there was a musical that was on Broadway, you know, eight, 10 years ago, and then we did this live version of it two years ago. So this was, this is the one that was on the back lot of Warner Brothers. Um, it happened to be, it aired and we did this the same year and essentially like a week before The Greatest Showman was coming out in movie theaters. So if you happen to watch A Christmas Story Live, they did a live commercial of The Greatest Showman. So literally on the back lot at Warner Brothers on one street behind, we did this live commercial of The Greatest Showman while we were filming three hours of A Christmas Story Live. So everything was live that day, so three hours of life. So that was definitely a full circle moment for me that The Greatest Showman <laughs> did a live, it was the first ever live commercial then on this live television show and that I was part of both of it. You know, this was like a year and a half of my life then. And then in the Heights uh, was the film, was the last film that I did. And we did that, well, it'd be two summers ago. Last summer doesn't really count, guys, right? We didn't get to do anything. So we just kind of skipped by it. So we're going to say, so I guess it would have been 90, yeah, um, 19. So 2019, the summer of 2019, uh, we filmed in the Heights, up in Washington Heights here in New York City. Um, and that was one of Lynn manuel Miranda's, who was the creator of Hamilton. Uh, so this was his piece that he had on Broadway 10 years ago. He wrote it while he was in college. 
Um, and now we filmed it as a, as a movie and it will be coming out in theaters this summer. It was supposed to come out last summer, um, but we needed to wait until you guys could see it in the theaters. So um, selfish little plug, In the Heights will be coming out in June, right around my birthday. It's like June 18th. Um, so please, please, please. And if you can't make it to the theaters and it's not safe yet, they've um they're collaborating with hbo so you can watch it on the hbo max and actually see it in your house but i gotta tell you this is this is the movie that you want to take your friends you want to go for brunch you want to have it's it's a day of celebration um the music the choreography the costumes the cinematography the directing this this is something special so please 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 this summer i hope you can tune into in the heights um a uh, quick little opening nights, just me with some designers, with my design teams at the Tony Awards, my very first year in New York City, um, going to the Tony Awards and Greg Barnes winning for best costume design. I mean, where do you go from there? I'd been in New York for not even a year yet. I was sitting at the Tony Awards and my designer won for best costume design. I was like, well, I guess I can just go home now. I guess all the boxes have now been checked. <laughs> um, but uh, but apparently not because I'm still here. So um, we have uh, uh, Gene Wilder up in the right hand corner, who was one, that was the opening night of Young Frankenstein. Um, Gene Wilder also went to the University of Iowa. You may not have known that. Um, but Thomas Meehan, who wrote Annie, Mel Brooks, you know, comedic genius. Um, and then just uh, other people that I've worked with, a bunch of my design teams. So um, I love hiring women. I love hiring uh, women from the Midwest. Um, I because uh, I get to do a lot of hiring. Um, I, uh, in fact, I prefer bringing people in from other places that are not that grew up uh, in small towns or that really paved their way um, uh, instead of recruiting from like NYU or Yale. Um, not to say that they didn't grow up in the Midwest, but it's just a very, very different way of, of going of going about a job. So um, I, I often do a lot of recruiting from the University of Iowa. And then we're just back to my homepage. So. Um, just a qu little quick blip, <laughs> a little slice of life, <laughs> of my life anyway. So thank you so much for coming on my journey. Kathy, this is absolutely awesome. And I'm sure we're going to have some more questions for you towards the end. Um, Nancy, um, we're going to go ahead and Stephanie, I believe, is going to share her the screen for your PowerPoint. And then um, we'll get click through. So Steph, if you want to share your screen. Thanks. I think, um, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. We can hear you perfectly, Nancy. Okay. Thanks. So, um, so this is our, this is the company that is, is based in Osage, Iowa. We, um, will be entering our fourth season this summer. Uh, you can go to the next one. That's just our logo. So get this started. So this is where we rehearse. We, to do summer stock, you need a rehearsal space and you need a performance space. Um, St. Anthony had just closed their old elementary um, and it was a perfect place. So you can go to the next one. So you can see that's the outside, but we rehearse in this gym and, and set up the, uh, we mark out the stage at, from Osage and that's where all of the rehearsals happen. So you can go to the next one. Then we moved down the road 10 miles to Osage, and this is the Cedar River Complex, which is fairly new. And you can see the inside view if you go to the next site, Cliff. So this is from the, um, from the box up above, and we're working on, I think it was Music Man setting it up and moving on to the next. I'm gonna quote real quick. So this is the auditorium. So you can see it's a really lovely performance venue in the middle of a town of what, maybe 4,000 people. So this is one of the draws that took me to my hometown. I, I wanted to start a summer stock theater. One of the reasons is I have two children who are professional actors and they've got their start in summer stock on the East Coast. So seeing what they used, would do out on the East Coast, so we don't really have this model in the Midwest where we bring in college students. I know there are summer stocks, but um, some are just one college or they're, they're connected to one college. What we do is we bring in kids from all over the nation. So it's not one particular college, but we draw from very, um, from a lot of different programs, ex exciting, excellent programs from around the country. So we can go to the next one. So um, we did, this was a show we did called Main Traveled Rose, which is about Hamlin Garland, who grew up in Osage, Iowa, and was a Pulitzer Prize winning author. So one of our goals is to actually uplift 
the narrative of the Midwest, which I think New York loses and so does LA. They don't understand it. Um, and sometimes our narrative gets lost. And I always felt like there's nothing special about growing up in the Midwest. And so one of my goals is to do shows that lift up our narrative and shows that our culture is also worthy of being examined. So next slide. Um, so there's just some more pictures from it. So uh, you can keep sliding through and I'll tell you when to stop. You can keep going so you can kind of see. Okay, so that's Oklahoma is another example of that type of a show that examines um, the Midwest culture that also has helped shape our country. And Music Man, another example uh, from Mason City that's based on um, a story uh, that River City is Mason City, Iowa. And so, the, and then, so Annie's a different um, focus that we have, and that is to offer our rural youth opportunity to have high quality experiences in the performing aspects of the arts. Something that my students in the Twin Cities get with the Guthrie and the Children's Theater, they can do these extra opportunities. This gives them a chance to do um, really high quality theater and be mentored by college and professionals in the, th in the field. And Joseph was our last one we did before um, in 20, 2019 that um, brought in kids from all over the country. Um, college students, but you can keep moving forward. That's our Joseph. You can see um, local youth involved in it. We also have local high school students and community members involved in our productions. Um, James and the Giant Peach would be another example of bringing in youth, but also telling stories that connect to children. Charlie Brown, another show we did last season that helps us connect to the kids and the families of the community. And of course, we wanna do some fun out there shows that only feature our college students, that we don't bring in really too many of the community members, but gives our college um, actors and technicians and a chance just to work with each other. So you can keep forward. Um, same, Jesus Christ Superstar was with just our, our college cast. And then we want to challenge our community by doing shows that are maybe not of the, the most contemporary versions of musical theater. So we did Pirates of Penzance and it was a really great way to introduce light opera to the community. And we also find um, what we love about our work is that our technical crew gets to work with technical professionals from the Twin Cities professional theater companies. Um, and I, I, like Kathy was talking about is that you connections are really huge in this business. You need to have connections. That's how you get indoors. Um, so I, I think it's great that we provide those opportunities for um, emerging artists to connect with professionals who will connect those artists with other professionals and help you launch your career. So we have a lot of our, um, our light designers from the Chanhassen Dinner Theater. Um, we have a number of acting directors from Chan um, the Guthrie Theater in the Twin Cities. All of them are um, equity-based um, theater companies. So can we give you one? So more of our technical crew working. And then we also offer um, fall cabarets for our actors to come back. So we keep connecting with our, our alumni. And, and you can also notice too, that our, our goal is to bring in a lot of diversity into our, our, our um, community. So we all, um, well, you can see the young man to the right of our um, leading lady there. And he is a University of Iowa grad. Uh, we have Viterbo represented there. Um, we have another University of Iowa man up there. And um, so yeah, so we bring in not only colleges from the Midwest, but that's who's seen there. And yeah, so keep moving on. So that's a quick, quick, quick view of kind of you get an image of what we do in the summers. And again, Nancy, that wow, that's fabulous because I had no idea that was right here. <laughs> I'm yeah. skipping a jump away. So thank you for showcasing that because it does really give students the opportunity that you can get um, training here as well and get a taste of things. Um, and then, you know, to start your career and move forward in it too. So thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, sure. Laura, I will hand it over to you if you want to showcase your work. Awesome. So if it's all right, I'll, I can 
take over screen sharing because I don't think I'm going to go through my whole website. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yep, you can go ahead and take over. Okay, let's see if this is working. Okay, are we seeing my website? Yep, we can see okay. you and hear you perfectly. Great. So first off, I want to say for the actor perspective, it's a little bit different because I have a lot of professional actor friends who don't necessarily have their own website. My website is really just so I can archive my work and a gallery of pictures of the productions I've been in. Uh, I don't necessarily book that much work from my website. However, I do have friends in New York who that is how they how they get connections. But it's usually through my agent. I have an agent for film, voiceover, commercial work, as well as print. Uh, and so kind of all the film elements. And then I am my own agent and a business person for my theater work. Uh, unless you are really in uh, New York, all of my New York, it is standard for my New York friends to have a theater agent. But if you are in one of these smaller uh, smaller hubs. So for instance, Seattle, Chicago, um, Austin, you're usually doing that work yourself on the theater end. Now for film, it's really hard to be booking big gigs if you don't have an agent. So film is a little bit different. Um, so let's just go through a little bit. And again, so this is my old website. I'm actually creating a brand new website. I made this one through Wix. So there's a lot of other different softwares you can use to create your websites. I'm switching over to Squarespace. So this is actually outdated. I'm just going to preface it with that. But this is my headshot, my friends. Um, as a professional actor, you usually want to get a new headshot at least every two to three years to keep it fresh. So I actually am planning on getting new headshots this summer. This was from 20. Uh, 17, late 2017, actually, for me. Okay, so my main thing is my gallery. So I just wanted to share a, a little bit about different types of shows that I've been in and how exciting that is as an actor to be in different kinds of shows. Because for the most part, I'm, I'm assuming most of our uh, theater experiences in high school so far have been a proscenium stage, right? So you have your, your um, proscenium style stage. So this was a show I did in Seattle before the pandemic struck. Now there's also theater uh, theaters that are black boxes. So this would have been, so this was the Seagull, which is a classic. And I did that in a black box space, which is a smaller theater, right? So I'm just scrolling through. Um, these are some shows I did in Chicago. This is one of my favorite shows I ever did, which was called Last of the Red Hot Lovers by Neil Simon. It's a comedy. And as you can see, there's a lot of different types of spaces that I have performed in. So Les Renaissance was actually a devised piece. And if you haven't heard of devised theater before, let me tell you a little bit about it. So devised theater is usually a location based. So you will take the audience on an immersive experience in a space. So for instance, this show was actually in an old church in Chicago, and it was a ghost story. So we led the audience through this whimsical, creepy, eerie ghost story, and there were candles everywhere. And it was um, more of a physical movement style piece with dance. For One is another example of a devised show. This one was super cool. It was in a mansion in Chicago and each room had a different show going on simultaneously. And it was a show for only one um, on for only one audience member at a time. So a bell would ring and then all of the audience members would rotate to a different room to see a different performance. And all of the performances were the exact same amount of time so that every time the bell rang, the audience member would get to go to a different show. So as you can see with acting, again, there's just so many types of shows that you can do that might you know, not exist in your um, standard high school theater experience so far. Uh, okay, so let's see. I want to go back really fast. Let's see, how can I go? <clears throat> I'm going to scroll all the way back to college because I want you to see. Okay, so here's an ex here's um, one of my pictures from Hay Fever, which is a show I did in college. I highly recommend looking into Webster Conservatory of Theater Arts because the productions are 
beautiful. You have your, all of your artistic team is, is preparing to do this professionally right in New York. So our set designers, you can get a degree in set design, in lighting, in makeup and wig design. I mean, it can get that specific right off the bat if you go for a BFA. Uh, so, so the shows we did there were just, just beautiful. Uh, here's Alice in Wonderland, Queen of Hearts. Going back, that I was a fairy in Midsummer. That was my first show in college. So that's kind of all of that there. Um, now, really fast, I want to show you what your standard resume would look like because I think this is a this is a, a piece that I didn't know in high school how to create a professional looking resume for my college audition. So really fast, I would take a few notes as to the main points that you need for a resume when you're going into the unified auditions to audition, if that's the track you want to do. So above, I have my personal information, so I purposefully didn't start there, but you would have your, your name heading as the largest piece. You would have your email, your, your phone number, if you would like, and your height. Uh, some people put weight. I do not think that's necessary anymore. Um, and then you will put your Just one moment. I think you need to screen share. The screen share is still on your um, National United Unified Auditions, that one. Do you need oh, to I'm like, so sorry. It, yes, thank you. that's Zoom for you. It, you have sorry. to like sometimes, there, there you go. go. Okay. No, okay, sorry about that. Well, so you would have your theater experience at the top. So if you're in high school, you would have, right, the high school shows you've been in. And the main pieces you need to hit would be the show, left-hand side, then what roles you played, what the theater space it was in. So if you want to like make it look fancy, you can say the Leigh Hedeman Auditorium or whatever your auditorium is called at your high school. And then the director would be on the right-hand column. You would like, you would need to do the column look. Uh, that is what is standard and um, just the professional uh, look for the resume, for a theater resume. Then I have my professional tours. I have regionally where they were. So my tours were regional in Chicago. Uh, and then I have my undergrads, so that's my college experience. And I have selected theater slash educational. So if I was, I was in an operetta in Chicago, which wasn't my main thing. So I put that as educational continuing. Uh, and then you always put your training. So you would say, you know, where you went to high school, if you're in high school, and then special skills slash awards, right, would go at the bottom. So if you are really good at unicycle riding, right, if you've done clown work, if you, you know, can do the splits really well, that's where all of those skills would go so that you also have a fun little thing to throw at them if they want to see you do one of the, but make sure if you have it on your skills, you better be able to do it in the room, right? So if I say I'm highly proficient in a Russian dialect, well, then I better be able to speak Russian dialect when I walk into a room, right? So that's what you'll need to do. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's a little fun. Um, and that is uh, more in regards to the acting piece. I just want to say also one last word, a word of advice. If you are interested in going to acting, make sure that you know that most of the time your job is going to be auditioning. So if you don't like to audition, you might want to figure that out now. And that's okay if you don't like it right now, but hopefully you will eventually learn to like it because that is the biggest piece if you're going to be an actor, your job is auditioning for jobs, <laughs> which is kind of unheard of in any other field, right? If you were to say to a banker, all right, every week you are going to go in and you are going to audition to work at it, you're going to audition, you're going to interview to work at a new bank. They, they think you're bananas, right? So that's kind of the different piece with acting and, and what you need to really understand going in and to be able to find the fun in the audition itself. Because if you are auditioning regularly and you book one out of every six things that you audition for, you are a success, that is like a high level of success, right? I had to pivot this year because theater doesn't exist right now and I had to pivot, most theater doesn't exist right now. So I had to pivot to more film work. Um, and I, you know, I have an HBO audition for a HBO film later on today, but that means there's probably a thousand other people going in that look just like me who are also auditioning for that audition, right? So the success is, wow, I booked this audition right? And not going in, I must book this audition or I'm not su successful is not going to be a positive outlook in this field. You go in, I have this audition. It's an, it's an exciting opportunity. I'm going to try to do my best work and show my best self and have fun. 
because at the end of the day, right, um, you, you want to be in the entertainment industry because it's hopefully a fun time <laughs> with a lot of hard work. So that's my two cents. Thank you all. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. Um, so thank you all for hanging around too. We did go a little bit over, but wow, what great information. Um, again, we are recording this, so we will be sharing it out. So panelists, we will be sharing this out. We work with 25, 26 school districts. So this will be shared with all of them um, where uh, any of their speech drama theater teachers can share this. Um, so just know that will be shared out. And um, if we have any additional questions from students, um, even after they watch it to watch the recording, um, we'll reach out to you. Um, but again, we appreciate your time, your talent, your energy. I'm excited. Man, it makes me want to go into the arts industry. So um, thank you all for sharing. Um, and I think we're set, Steph, unless you have anything else. Nope, we're good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. Have a great day. Thank you.